Hello friends, in this video we are going to start with the mediators of inflammation. So the mediators of inflammation are the substances that initiate and regulate inflammatory reactions. So this is the basic definition. Now some important points about mediators of inflammation. The most important mediators of acute inflammation are vasoactive amines. These are the group of mediators which we will discuss in detail. Okay, vasoactive amines that is histamine or serotonin or maybe lipid products that is your prostaglandin or leukotrienes or cytokines okay and products of complement system so these are the common mediators of inflammation okay. the next point about inflammation is in mediators is that mediators are either secreted by cells or generated from plasma proteins so this is divided into two types either secreted from cells or generated from plasma protein now cell derived mediators are again divided into two types one is that uh, those mediators which are stored in cells in form of granules okay and when stimulation come then degranulation occur by the exocytosis in some if any stimulus is come then that type of mediators are synthesized synthesis is based on stimulus example is your prostaglandins okay it is synthesized de novo that is the prostaglandin leukotrienes here it is in response to any stimulus clear now the major cell type that produce mediators of in inflammation okay are the macrophages dendritic cell and mast cell clear now coming to the plasma proteins derived so plasma derived mediators are, mediators are mainly complement proteins complement proteins are the plasma derived mediators okay now the next important point about mediators of inflammation that is the active mediators are produced only in response to any stimuli okay active mediators are only produced when any stimulus is given and the stimulus may be your microbial products or it may be from necrotic cell so necrotic cell or microbial product may be the stimulus for the active mediators clear now the next point is that mediators are mostly short lived okay they quickly decay or are inactivated by enzymes or they are otherwise scavenged or inhibited this is beneficial because it maintains a system of check and balance that regulate mediator actions clear now the next point i am mentioning here okay the next point is that one mediator can stimulate the release of other mediators how so products of complement activation products of complement activation stimulate the release of histamine okay product of complement activation is stimulating the release of histamine and the cytokinin teen tuber necrosis factor okay it acts on endothelial cell to stimulate the production of another cytokine that is known as IL1 interleukin 1 so one mediator can stimulate the release of other mediators so once again revising the important points about mediators that they may be best active means lipid product cytokines complement system or second point that they may be secreted from cells or either plasma proteins derivatives the activators are produced only response to stimuli the stimulus may be microbial or necrotic cell most of the mediators are short lived and one mediator can stimulate the release of another mediator so this is the basic about the mediators of inflammation now we will dis start discussing individually individual mediator so the first one is your vasoactive amine that is histamine okay and serotonin the first one is histamine and serotonin so they are the vasoactive amines mind it they are the amines and they have important action on blood vessels so they are named so okay now these two they are stored as perform molecules and are therefore among the um, they are among the first mediators to be released during inflammation so they are the first mediators which are released during inflammation clear and now coming to the histamine first so the richest source of histamine is the mast cell okay this question is very important mast cell is the richest source of histamine no problem now it can be also this is the richest source but histamine can also be found in basophils also can be found in your platelets clear now the next point about histamine histamine is stored in mast cell granules and is released by mast cell degranulation in response to variety of stimuli the we will discuss stimuli when histamine really is released so the stimuli may be so taking here okay i am taking here so look for here okay the stimuli may be the stimuli may be your 
फिजिकल इन सेल इंजरी मीन्स द स्टमरी में भी फिजिकल सेल इंजरी क्लियर दैट इज ट्रोमा कोल्ड और हीट बाई और एनी अनदर अनोन मैकेजम द सेकेंड इज बाइंडिंग ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज टू मेस सेल इफ एंटीबॉडी बाइंड टू मेस सेल देन इट विल कॉज डिग्रेनुलेशन ओके विच इज सीन इन हाइपर सेंसिटिव रिएक्शंस द थर्ड इज प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कॉम्प्लीमेंट दैट इज नोन एज एन फाइलोटॉक्सिन दैट इज सी थ्री ए सी फाइव ए ओके इट कैन ऑल्सो स्टूमुलेट डिक्रोनुलेशन सो दे आर बेसिक थ्री स्टूमुलस दैट इज फिजिकल सेल इंजरी बाइंडिंग ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज टू मेस सेल एंड द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कॉम्प्लीमेंट सिस्टम कैन एक्टिवेट योर मेस सेल डिग्रेनुलेशन क्लियर नाउ coming to the next some important functions neuropeptides such as such as you know substance p clear or cytokines such as il1 interleukin 1 interleukin 8 may also trigger release of histamine clear now coming to the functions of the histamine so first coming to the functions of histamine so histamine causes mainly dilation of arterioles and increases permeability of venules so this is the major function of the histamine that is the dilation of arterioles and increases permeability of vessels it is also involved in endothelial activation so increasing the increasing so dilation of arterioles increasing permeability of venules and the endothelial activation is the major function of the histamine clear now histamine is considered to be the principal mediator of the imme immediate transient phase of increased vascular permeability now one more its vasoactive effects histamine vasoactive effects are mediated mainly by by a binding to receptors that is known as h1 receptors histamine binds to h1 receptors which is present on microvascular endothelial cells clear so the antihistaminic drug that are commonly used to treat some inflammatory reactions such as allergy are basically h1 receptor antagonist clear so this is most important h1 receptor antagonist histamine also causes sometimes contraction of ischemic muscle clear yeah? so this is all about your histamine now we are moving for the next vas active amine that is serotonin that is also known as 5 hydroxy tryptamine clear yeah? so it is a profound vas active mediator present in mainly seen in it is platelets clear yeah? platelets and certain neuroendocrine cells which is present in your gi tract so they are mainly present in platelets and certain neuroendocrine cells such as in the gid tract okay now its primary function is as neurotransmitter in the gid tract it is also a vasoconstrictor okay it is also a mild vasoconstriction so this is all about your histamine and serotonin once again i am revising they are both are vasoactive amines histamine is rich sources mast cell or may be present in mesophyll and platelets clear histamine may released by degenerated by the different types of stimuli physical stimuli binding of antibodies or product of complement that is anaphylactotoxin c3 c5 neuropeptides can also trigger the release of histamine histamine main function was dilation of arterioles and increased permeability of venules as well as endothelial activation h1 receptor h1 receptor antagonist then serotonin platelets neuroendocrine cells okay it is at acting a neurotransmitter in the gid tract and it is a vasoconstriction so this is major functions next mediator that is arachidonic acid metabolites arachidonic acid metabolites so the lipid mediators that is it includes prostaglandin leukotrienes mainly okay so the lipid mediators that is prostaglandin and leukotriene are produced from arachidonic acid which is present in membrane phospholipid and stimulate vascular and cellular reaction in acute inflammation we will discuss in detail so the first we will look for the synthesis of the this prostaglandin or leukotriene so suppose this is your cell membrane and we know cell membrane contains phospholipid okay cell membrane contain phospholipid now one enzyme that is phospholipase phospholipase is enzyme when acts on cell membrane then it will lead to release of free arachidonic acid arachidonic acid is present in present here but it is in bound form phospholipase will come and digest it and release free arachidonic acid now this arachidonic acid follow two pathway if it is acted upon by cyclo oxygenase enzyme then it will fall it will form different products and if it is acted by lipo oxygenase enzyme then it will follow different path so first we will focus on cyclo oxygenase enzyme clear there are two of two types of cyclo oxygenase cyclo oxygenase 1 and cyclo oxygenase 2 now coming to the cyclo oxygenase so when cyclo oxygenase act on arachidonic acid it lead to the formation of prostaglandin g2 okay 
prostaglandin G2. It is converted into prostaglandin S2, and this prostaglandin is going to form three types of product. Okay, the first one is your prostacyclin that is known as PGI2. This is prostacyclin. The next one is your thrombexin A2, thrombexin A2, and the third one is your post PGD2. This prostaglandin D2 or PGE2 or or it may be PG F2 alpha. Okay, so if cyclooxygenase enzyme will act on erythroclonic acid, it will lead to formation of PGG2, then PGH2, then it will form three compounds. PGH2 is converted into three compounds either PGI2, that is prostacyclin, thromboxane 2 or prostaglin D2, E2, and F2 alpha. Here we will discuss functions of them individually. So, first we will discuss functions it is the function of prostacyclin. So, prostacyclin causes vasodilation as well as they have. They inhibit platelet aggregation. So platelet aggregation is inhibited by this. Then prostacyclin will inhibit platelet aggregation. Coming to the thromboxane A2, so it is just opposite to prostacyclin. It will cause vasoconstriction and it will promote platelet aggregation. It will promote platelet aggregation. So thromboxane A2 is just performing inhibited to your prostacyclin. Clear? Now the functions of PGD2, PG e2 and pg2 alpha clear so they causes vasodilation they will cause vasodilation they can increase vascular permeability also they also increase vascular permeability now one specific function about pg2 alpha very important okay that uh, pg2 alpha causes contraction of uterine and bronchial smooth muscle and small arterials so this is a very important point okay that is it is causing bronchial bronchial smooth muscle contraction bronchial smooth muscle contraction very important point okay now moving to the next some important functions more i am describing here in this part so one is pgd2 pgd2 has one specific function that it is also acting as chemo attractant it also acts as chemo attractant clear no problem here now Starting with the second, that is electrodonic acid when acted upon by lipooxygenase, then what will happen? Before going to lipooxygenase, I will tell one more important point here. We have I have told that there are two types of cyclooxygenase, that is COX1, cyclooxygenase 2. So there is a basic difference between the, these two. So cyclooxygenase 1 is produced in response to inflammatory stimuli and is also constitutively expressed in most tissue. Okay, so it is a type of constitutive enzyme. Now coming to the hey, it, okay, that is cyclooxygenase 2. It is induced, so it is inducible. It is induced by inflammatory stimuli, and that generate the prostaglandin that are involved in inflammatory reactions. Clear? Whereas this cycl so cyclooxygenase 1 is produced in response to an inflammatory stimuli, and it and it also constitutively expressed in most tissue, where it may serve as a homeostatic function. Clear? So this is the basic difference between cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. Now we will go for the next pathway that is lipooxygenase pathway. So if arachidonic acid is acted upon by 5 lipooxygenase enzyme, then it will lead to formation of 5 HPET. Okay, its full form is hydroperoxy eicosteroidal acid. Okay, 5 HPET. Now this 5 HP HPET may it lead to formation of 5 HET. Okay, here. Yeah. Now this is also converted into leukotriene A4 and it is converted into leukotriene B4 and these two, these two acts as chemoattractant. It, may, it means they are involved in chemotaxis. Clear? Now the second maybe this can lead to from a, this this 5-HPT is acted upon by 12 sorry this 5-HPT may be acted upon by 12 lipooxygenase enzyme okay 12 lipooxygenase enzyme then it will lead to formation of different compounds that is i mentioning here okay if it is acted upon by 12 lipooxygenase enzyme then it will form lipoxin a4 or lipoxin b4 here yeah? and this lipoxin a4 and b4 they are anti-inflammatory most important point lipoxins are anti-inflammatory whereas leukotrienes are inflammatory because they are involved in chemotaxis here yeah? No problem now this leukotriene a4 is again converted into i am mentioning here leukotriene a4 is again forming leukotriene c4 or leukotriene d4 or leukotriene e4 and this three will cause bronchospasm 
very very important one they can cause bronchospasm they can increase vascular permeability clear so once again i will be hygiene hold the arachidonic acid metabolites so arachidonic acid if acted upon by cyclooxygenase then it will lead to formation of prostacycline or thrombexane a2 or prostaglandin prostacycline was vasodilation but doing vasodilation in with platelet aggregation where thrombooxin was just opposite vasoconstriction platelet aggregation promotes promotion here whereas prostaglandin d2 e2 vasodilation increased vascular permeability and pgf2 alpha important for bronchial smooth muscle contraction lipoxinase 5 lipoxinase acted upon by 5 lipoxinase it will lead to formation of 5 sp et it will converted to 5 het and this is also converted into leukotriene a4 which is converted into leukotriene b4 and this too acting as chemotactic agent clear if 5 hp et is acted upon by 12 lipoxinase then it will lead to formation of lipoxin which is anti inflammatory very important lipoxins are anti inflammatory whereas leukotrienes are pro inflammatory it is involved in chemotaxis and this leukotriene c4 d4 it is also causing bronchospasm and increase vascular permeability so very very important they are very important clear now we will discuss some clinical important points about this so there are certain drugs which can inhibit your cyclooxygenase enzyme okay so they are non steroidal anti inflammatory drug non steroidal anti inflammatory drug can inhibit cox enzyme the cyclooxygenase enzyme such as example is aspirin clear or indomethacin so they can inhibit your cyclooxygenase enzyme clear they inhibit both cox1 and cox2 and inhibit prostaglandin synthesis okay hence their efficiency in treating pain and fever so they can these two drugs can treat your pain and fever pain and fever okay because prostaglandin is not going to form clear aspirin does this by irreversibly acetylene and inactivating cyclooxygenases okay there may be selective cox inhibitor that inhibits cox2 or 1 here no problem now moving to the lipooxygenase inhibitor so 5 lipooxygenase is not affected by your it is not like 5 lipooxygenase is not inhibited by non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs clear pharmacological agent that inhibit leukotriene production one example is your xyluton xyluton can inhibit 5 lipooxygenase enzyme and if one any this drug xyluton can be used in treatment of asthma because it is inhibiting the formation of leukotriene and we have discussed leukotriene is causing bronchospasm so xylutoin will help in bronchospasm treatment clear no problem now corticosteroid corticosteroid are broad spectrum anti inflammatory agent that reduce the transcription of genes encoding cox2 cox2 okay so we and we also discussed in earlier that cortisol has anti inflammatory activity because they will inhibit the transcription of genes that code for cox2 phospholipase a2 pro inflammatory cytokine that is il1 and tnf okay so this is all about your leukotrienes that means this is all about your arachidonic acid products lipid products clear in next video we will discuss about cytokines chemokines and complementary system so thank you for watching